Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today and this video today is going to be incredibly helpful if you're running Google Ads no matter what level you're running them at. I spent over a million dollars on Google Ads in 2023 and in this video I'm going to be breaking down five key points and strategies that I learned that helped accelerate my results in Google Ads. So this is going to be incredibly helpful to anyone who is running Google Ads no matter what stage you're running them at. Simply if you are running ads at a low budget or if you are the complete opposite and running ads at you know scale so there's going to be something in here for you that I'm sure could help your Google Ads out now just before we do jump into it if you are struggling with Google Ads and do own an e-commerce business feel free to get in touch with my Google Ads agency I'll leave a link down below we help e-commerce clients scale and grow their Google Ads so if you are interested in that check out the link in the description now if we quickly hop over to Google Ads I'll just show you the 2023 results like I said uh, this one here is my UK business as you know I've got a UK and USA business. The spend in 2023 for this business, the UK side, was exactly a third of a million pounds, so 333k. And if we switch over to the US account really quickly, that's all time. So if we quickly just go to 2023, 31st of December up to the 1st of Jan, you'll be able to see that if you convert this to dollars, it's just over a million dollars. You can see 490k. So in total, 822,000 pounds in ad spend. You can see that is just over a million dollars in spend on Google in the year of 2023. Now, one of the most common questions I get asked is what campaign types are best for my business? And the simple truth is each business works differently. Each Google ad account behaves differently. So what might work for me may not work for you, but I always am a big advocate of you've got to test everything so then you know for sure. One thing I know people struggle with is like the shop inside of performance max. And last year, 2023 in particular, with my UK business, I branched back into standard shopping a lot more. To give a bit more context, I essentially added a brand new category of products to my business. I launched them in my you know, standard performance max campaigns like these two here. And because there was already existing products in these campaigns getting results, Google didn't give any ad spend to the new products I was putting in, which is obviously very frustrating when you work hard to launch a bunch of new products. And if they get no ad spend, they're not gonna get sales. And I didn't want to put them in their own performance max campaign on their own because that is quite a tricky thing to do with zero data on those products that could be a mess and that could take a lot of time to get going so I thought I'd just go back to what I did three four years ago and try a simple standard shopping campaign now the campaign in question is this one here and you can see it spent quite a significant amount compared to sort of these other campaigns here and just bearing in mind this is just one product category a new category I added to my business so around May time last year is when I launched this and you can see £55,000 in spend with a 2.85 ROAS, which is very, very profitable for this particular category. Now, if we break it down on the product level here, just to sort of show you how the spend has been distributed, you can see a clear winner in terms of spend is this top product here, getting about £25,500 of spend. You know, again, 2.88 ROAS, very, very good. But you can see some products here are above a three. Like I said, this is a collection with incredibly good profit margin. And essentially, my point here is that this, this worked for me. You know, people often you know exactly like I did they add new products into existing performance max campaigns and they just sit there and get no spend so I tried this it worked I know another question a lot about standard shopping is bid strategy I simply went straight in at a target ROAS bid strategy I started it a lot lower than what it is now so you can see the target ROAS now is 275% now I started this at the break-even ROAS for this product which was around a 135% ROAS that just encourages the spend even more and then as it does spending as sales start to come in you can slowly increase this you don't want to go in and make this a 400% ROAS campaign to begin with because it just won't spend so a safe way to play it set it at your break even ROAS let it run for a bit and then gradually scale things up I know there's questions about other bid strategies like manual CPC and stuff that did work three four years ago for me but this is a strategy in particular that I found success with with standard shopping so for this first point here like I said if you're struggling to get impressions and clicks on certain products in Pmax put some of them in a standard shopping campaign and just try this there's no harm in trying it and you may find yourself getting more sales because of it now if we hop over to the US ad account here um, this is point number two one thing in particular I focused on in 2023 and even more so in this current year is what I'm going to be focusing on is just 
Standard search campaigns. Yes, shopping campaigns are great, but search is still a huge factor with Google Ads and it's almost a waste if you don't use it. I certainly need to use it a lot more. You can even just tell with my ad spend here. So this is my search campaign that isn't brand search. You can see still a fair amount of ad spend last year, just under 30,000 pounds. But in comparison to these Pmax campaigns, it's really nothing at all. Now, a really good way to structure your search campaigns, and this is exactly what I've done here, is take your best sellers from your shopping or Pmax campaign and test them on search. Don't launch a search campaign with 100 different landing pages and products in. Really isn't an efficient way to do this. If you've got a product that sells and has proven itself on the shopping channel, then odds are that's gonna do well on search and you don't have to go through the whole testing process. You've got a winning product essentially that you can just put on another channel and that being search. Now, obviously I'm gonna blow out the ad group names, but this is the sort of structure of it. Every single ad group you see here is one of two types of products. So I simply run two types of products in this search campaign now some of these are product landing pages you know just the default Shopify product landing page some I think uh, we have a quick look here this one here is the Shopify collection landing page this again performing really well at a 3.9 row has this ad group here is a custom built gem pages uh, collection page and you can see a 7.7 .7 row has on this one here it's just a good way to test different landing page styles and you know with shopping you can't take them to a custom gem page collection page you're only going to take that person who clicks a shopping ad to a product page so it's a good way to get visitors and potential customers to see more of your product range on that first you know page they visit on your website and again bid strategy I've gone with target rise here I've set it fairly low uh, again it just encourages the spend and you can see pretty much every ad group here is over achieving in comparison to what I've set the target rise as now another question people will probably have regarding this is how do I choose the keywords and search terms to target in my search campaign all I simply do is go into your shopping or Pmax campaign with the existing data of these you know potentially winning products literally it's just on the insights tab you can see here somewhere you know it looks different for everyone else the layout is always changing but somewhere on here I'm obviously not going to show the keywords but it will give you search terms that have converted in this Pmax campaign you know it will give you a sort of a hundred here but I usually take five to ten and just use those five or ten in the search campaign and again it just saves that keyword it it saves that element of guessing and testing different search terms because the ones you're seeing here that have already converted they are they've proven themselves so you're eliminating that wasted ad spend on testing and for me that has again worked really really well it's essentially a search campaign like i said separate to pmax but you're already giving it everything it needs from the get-go to avoid that wasted ad spend. Now, point number three is product feed optimization, and this is a huge sort of category where you can change a number of things to potentially change the outcome of a potential product success or not. Things such as the SEO title and description of your product, um, the image, the price, tags, custom labels, and things like that, but they're just more so there to organize your products within the campaigns itself. But anyway, so a good example here, I've just searched pizza oven, I'm in the UK, every single image you can see apart from one on this first page has a white background now each to their own you will have to test this it, you know like I said I guess it different things work for different businesses for my businesses personally lifestyle images outperform white background images 99.5% of the time. So instantly here, you can see this image here is what I would class as a lifestyle image. It's the product in use actually in real life and not just a sort of standard placeholder product image like this with a white background. It stands out from the rest and depending on what product you're selling, a simple quick Google search will allow you to see, you know, your competition and how you're gonna place against them. But on the other hand, white background images may work better for your business. It's something to test, but like I said, for me personally, lifestyle images definitely work better another thing i want to touch on is the price as well a lot of people think you know google shopping is like amazon whereas amazon you need to be the cheapest to get that sale i wouldn't stress too much about that with google shopping yes it might increase your click-through rate and things like that if you are the cheapest but if you're too cheap you you're going to lose that premium sort of quality feel about your brand if you've got a higher price and slightly higher price than your competitors often that builds a bit of trust for me personally again in the last six weeks or so for my best sellers i've increased their selling price by about 60 percent which of course is you know quite a jump but there's been no dropping conversion rate. I almost think it makes the brand I run feel more premium. But the point is with that, it's not affected my performance on ads. It's not affected conversion rate. And at the end of the day, it's making more profit and increasing those profit margins for the business, which at the end of the day is the most important thing rather than you know all these revenue numbers. 
profit is key. Now my fourth point is gonna be conversion rate optimization. And you might think, well, that's not Google related at all. There's only so much you can do on Google. I mean, let's say you try everything possible on Google and it's still not working. That's probably telling you your website is just terrible. So equally as important, or if not more important than how you structure your Google campaigns is your landing page and your you know whole user experience on your website. So there's so many different little things you can do to your landing pages and your website to essentially increase that conversion rate. You know, if you double your conversion rate, that is seriously going to be a game changer for your business. And I like to mention this website again that I mentioned in my previous video because it is just an incredible example of what a good, trustworthy, branded website looks like. I know this is their homepage, but you can see just a few things on here that stand out instantly. Is their Trustpilot score so legitimate, real, you know, verified reviews? A Trustpilot score is, if you've got a good one, something you definitely want to be showing on your website. You've got these awards as well, which instantly builds that trust. Now, we just go to one of their sort of main products here, which is one of their mattresses. You can see it's such a clean website. It's just one of the best I've ever seen, personally. I just absolutely love this. Uh, you can see they've got their upsells here. You've got, again, the Trustpilot rating on the product page, clear pricing, such a clear and concurrent color scheme. Like I said, again, one of my favorites. You've got this thing. You've got this really clear standout pricing section at the bottom where you can either pay, you know, 400 pounds for the mattress up front or you can split it into you know monthly payments, but this is very, very clear. You've got an in-stock badge as well, which is something I use on my brick businesses as well, something that helps. And again, you've not got your typical, you know, scammy drop shipping trust badges. You've got really good sort of clean trust badges here that are related to the business, you know, none of this sort of rubbish 30-day warranty type thing that you see all drop shippers use. So this is a good sort of thing to take inspiration of. And another good thing is an FAQ section as well on the product page. Certain products might not need all of this information to sell, but this again is just an example. There are a million things you can do, you know, website speed is another one, but I like to talk about my personal experience in, you know, CRO conversion rate optimization and what I've done and personally seen results for. And for me, I'd say the two biggest things are definitely adding a Trustpilot score to you, to the product page and the, and the website in general and adding these sorts of things to product pages like these, you know, legit focused uh, trust badges as well. Okay, and finally, another thing I've learned from the million dollars or so I spent last year on Google Ads and that is expanding into international markets can take a bit of time, but it's certainly something worth doing. Now, this is my US ad account. And if I just highlight these two campaigns here, um, like I said, it's a US business, but I've expanded into Australia and Canada as well. These are just shopping campaigns. They're not search or anything. They're standard shopping. And I've been able to do this by essentially submitting a second and third product feed to my merchant center in these countries. Now, this is quite a delicate area, if you will. If you use Simprosis on Shopify to sync your feed to Merchant Center, they'll have a tutorial on how to do this. And essentially to avoid suspension, you need to make sure things like pricing converts correctly, shipping costs are set up. But you know, once it's done, it's done. In terms of ROAS, it is profitable slightly. But I guess the key thing to learn here is not all products behave the same in different countries, even if they speak the same language. You know, just for a bit of context, this top campaign here is exactly the same product in the US, and this is at a 3.7 ROAS. So that just shows it's almost half in terms of performance, but there's a lot to learn here. And essentially with this, don't think you have to stick to one country with Google. I'd definitely master one country first and get consistent profitable results before you add 10 countries just do one by one you know you may surprise yourself and you may find a second or third country that does better than the original so i hope you found this video helpful and you can take away a few things to hopefully improve your google results or your overall results for your business like i said if you are struggling with google ads and you want our help check out my agency's link at the top of the description but other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video